a little-known crime thriller series called The Blacklist, made its debut on NBC in the 10 o'clock hour on September 23, 2013, and immediately captured viewers with its plot about a high-profile fugitive, voluntarily deciding to work with the FBI. The Blacklist also starred the always brilliant James Spader, who had fantastic roles in both the work dramedy, the office, and the lawyer drama, Boston Legal. The hour-long spectacle quickly captivated audiences with excellent character chemistry and Cliffingers like no other, thanks to Mr. Spader taking on the role of Raymond Reddington, the turncoat of the criminal underworld, and Megan Boone playing Elizabeth Keene, a rookie FBI agent that Raymond exclusively wants to work with. There will certainly be ups and downs during the filming and production process, just as with any long-running television program which cause audiences and ratings to fluctuate. The Blacklist's creators did permit a spin-off at one point called The Blacklist, Redemption, but it only lasted for a brief first season. Another difficult time for the show's enigmatic and slowly unfolding plot came when actress Megan Boone unexpectedly became pregnant. Although this is common for couples who also happen to appear in front of the camera for television or movies, some hasty decisions had to be made to accommodate for this obvious shift in on-screen look. However, when this occurred in The Blacklist, the creators and writers decided to make Elizabeth Keene's character pregnant as well, but with a catch. In the program, Ms. Boone's character pretends to die during childbirth, so that she may tend to her newborn kid, while simultaneously escaping Mr. Reddington and his cunning schemes and shielding her new family from the dark underworld she is now embroiled in. Whether it was deliberate or not, the Blacklist's ratings were also somewhat falling at the same time as this momentous occasion. James Spader's deliberate and patient attention to character development was fully tapped in an episode that followed the alleged murder of Ms. Keene, which successfully regained public interest, just as the show's millions of viewers were watching less than half of the series' debut. In Kate May, the 19th episode of the third season, an uncharacteristically damaged Raymond Reddington visits a beach house that appears to have been abandoned on the shore of the lovely town. There, by himself, he investigates the issues with his traumatized mind and tormented past, along with the reflecting appearance. The often fast-paced story beats are far slower than usual, and the bold and direct color scheme is substituted with a summer gray-blue shade to go with the foggy out-of-time scenario. Surprisingly, throughout the duration of its 60 minutes, the criminal drama production genuinely enters a disturbing, almost supernatural realm. The first thing that devoted fans of The Blacklist will notice when it comes to Kate May is the lack of dialogue, the frantic and consistent voices from Mr. Reddington and Elizabeth that usually fill the air are suddenly gone, and our top hat-wearing immoral protagonist is far and away from either the FBI or his fugitive cohorts. Not that there won't be any as a consequence of Raymond and the enigmatic woman he ends up saving but the episode's creepy silence is instead filled with ambient noises that heighten the subtly unsettling mood. Untouched furniture begins to move on its own and groan as Raymond travels about the home, searching for a cloaked killer. Seagulls sing and waves wallow while he's on a long, deserted beach. As the episode goes on, we see the man we've come to love and loathe along with his enigmatic friend get close in a matter of scenes before defending her from some thugs who have come to attack her. The episode's soundtrack intensifies and confirms that something is still seriously wrong with the battle's seeming resolution, after our two allies have decisively defeated our hidden attackers. As Raymond makes his way to the garage to prepare the car to depart this polluted seaside cottage, a deep bass riff follows him around. There is a beaten up, covered, dusty vehicle sitting there instead of the cab he really purchased to get here. The residence has not been harmed by the recent shootout as he enters inside once more to speak with the red-haired woman and get further information. Neither the bathroom sink nor the windows have been blown out. When the audience most needed our trustworthy narrator, he appeared to turn on and change into one who wasn't. Please post your comments in the space provided below. If you like the video, click the like button. For access to additional breakdowns, you may also subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you later.